blank name is saying, I am a closet ex-Muslim. Uh, only my parents don't know. I'm far away from them in college, but she, meaning my mother, is still messaging me about bringing in hell and stuff and stuff. I don't want this in my life, but I can't set boundaries. So what is your advice to cope with this? Um, this is Go back to the difficult first one. because a lot of people rely on their parents for financial support during college. So the option of completely removing them from your life might not be viable. Um, and so that, I don't know what that situation is like for you financially, but that's a huge factor that has to be navigated in how you approach this relationship. Um, and based on some other stuff you've said, um, you know, kind of in our Q and A's about your relationships with your parents, like they don't, I'm, I get the sense I could be wrong that they are, would not be receptive to you being like, Hey, that's a really harmful, like destructive thing for me to hear. Um, why, why are you trying to like put that in my life? Um, in an ideal situation, if everyone could approach the conversation as an adult, which unfortunately many adults can't, um, that would be my way of trying to approach things being like, Hey, you know, this is actually like a really harmful thing. And it, it doesn't, it makes me want to not engage with you. It makes me want to not have you in my life, but I don't know if that's a possibility for you. Um, Armin, what do you think? How would you set it back? Um, yeah, I mean, just a reminder, anything we say is based on very limited information. Um, and even if we had more information, and we, we're not our professionals. advice might not. Yes. And even if we had more information, our advice might not be the best advice. Um, and our advice might have changed if we get more details about the situation. Right. So this is just just please understand that that this is not necessarily the best answer. And you have to uh, assess the situation yourself. Um, I wonder um, how much this might help, like because m my understanding of the question is that you just want to figure out a way to cope with it. Like you are stuck in a situation where you can't change ex things externally. Like um, you are, you're just asking for advice of how to mentally cope with it rather than change anything externally. Like there is, you are stuck in a situation where nothing outside of your own mind is changeable about the situation that you're dealing with. Right. If that's your question, um, and you want to just figure out how to mentally cope with it. One thing that my oh, blank name is saying yes. Okay, so okay, so I did have the right interpretation. Um, so one thing that you might want to consider, and if that doesn't help, ask me again because I might come up with other coping methods, is to look at your parents as just a product of their environment, and just expect them to be like that. And think about understanding that me, you, Suze are very different animals. Wait, 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 YouTube, I'm talking about myself, okay? You have to be very careful with our language because YouTube is going to think we're dehumanizing somebody. Okay, I, I, I can't use that word anymore because YouTube's algorithm is very sensitive, okay? We're not, we are, we are social, can I say creature? Um, we are social entities that respond to the societies that we're building, we are in, in a very predictable way. And the ones of us who don't, the ones of us like Blank Dame or Susanna or me, we are weird. We are the weird ones. We are different. We are kind of like rebellious and we're not just following the norm, but the, given that the vast majority of the people in society respond to what is norm in a very predictable way, then what you're experiencing is something that to, is to be expected, all right? And you should think, like, I want you to feel good about, like, think, like, you know, every time you hear that, you, I want you to say in your head, maybe say, try this. I don't know if this is work for you, right? 
just be in your don't tell it to your mom or dad but maybe say in your head i understand why you're like this and it's okay and i forgive you and you're my mom and you're my dad even if you don't accept me in my life i accept even if you don't accept me the way i am i accept you the way you are and and maybe congratulate see if you could congratulate yourself for doing that so 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 that you have an excuse to feel something positive about this to think like look how mature i am being like use this as an i know this is a really sucky situation but try to see if you could use this as an as a way to congratulate i know this comes off as very self-centered or very egoistic but who cares if this is a sucky situation whatever positive feeling you could you know squeeze out of this even if it's egoistic or self-congratulatory do it because you're trying to get any positive feeling you can from out of this right so just like come off as a better person in the situation look and see like tell yourself look it's a it's, it's a par parent's responsibility to accept the child the way they are not the child this is not what a child is supposed to do but i am mature enough to do do this the other way around i am accepting them I am the way they are, even if they're not doing this to me. I am forgiving, going as far as forgiving them because I understand them as a product of their environment. And even if they will never accept me, I will always accept them. I will always ex forgive them. And that makes me a good person. And come off at the other end congratulating yourself and feeling good about the way you are and just steal that good feeling and just f stick with that. I don't know if that helps at all. I have some contentions know. with that. Like, mm -hmm. if someone is still in the midst of being abused, I don't necessarily think that that would be a constructive way for them to think about things necessarily. I see mm -hmm. where you're coming from. But it's it, when thinking of that, it's extremely important to highlight that you are not accepting their abusive behavior towards you. Okay, you're not accepting that. You're not saying that that's okay. You know, I think Armin's more speaking towards, for example, I had a lot of issues with certain things my parents, how they treated me throughout when I grew up. Later in life, I learned about some stuff that happened to them before I was born that made me empathize for them and understand what they went through that explained how they then passed that on to me. And then I had empathy and compassion for them. But I was only able to reach that point once I had already left that situation, removed myself from it and healed from it to a certain extent. Um, but I would like to make a really quick recommendation to you. A podcast that helped me a lot in my life is called The Mental Illness Happy Hour. And this podcast is this comedian who's a host and he talks about his own history of um, abuse and stuff that happened in his family. And he interviews someone every week, either someone who struggled with it themselves or maybe professionals. Um, and they have episodes categorized by issues, whether it be specific clinical diagnoses or issues of um, recovering from abusive parenting. And um, I've gained a lot of insight and tips and, um, also just not feeling so alone by listening to that podcast. So I would definitely recommend the mental illness happy hour, specifically the ones uh, on um, survivors of abuse. Right. So, so what you said kind of confirms what I said too, because you said that you managed to find empathy for them once you find out their backstory and how they got to where they are. Right. And you, you managed to do that when you're distant, where you, when you were a bit distant from them. Right. So this might still be a possibility for Black Dan because he is um, separate from them. He's in the college and he's not with them. And but also, he's, that behavior is still being inflicted on him. Yes, but I, again, I say might. That's why I'm saying might. And I also want to say that with the lack of even so, for for example, when Susanna experienced some negative things from her parents, but then when she found their story, she had empathy for them a little bit more to see how they got to where they are. So I just want the people who don't know the stories for how their parents got there, where they are, to, to, to come up with the understanding that there might be a story 
like that they that they would discover so you know that would make them feel empathetic towards their parents even if you're not aware of the story maybe if you maybe if you had a moment of your entire story of your mom's or dad's life you would come out like oh my god my poor mom i can see why you're like this and you would feel like if you just went to have the flashback of all the life you would be instead of being upset about them you would empathize with them a lot like so just think even if i have if I'm not aware of the story, that story might exist. Okay. However, I, what I was suggesting was not that this is a helpful thing to do. I said, it might be a helpful thing to do. Try it because it doesn't involve any, it can't, it's not destructive because you're not doing anything. All you're doing is thinking about things differently. Like it's not, it can't have any that much of a destructive uh, side effect. If, 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 uh, if you're not putting out anything in the world, that might have a negative effect. All I'm saying is try thinking about it that way and see if you feel better about it. And if you if it doesn't make you feel better about it, then you could try something else, right? So I'm just saying this is something you might want, might want to try to reframe how you look at things. Again, it might not be the right answer, but it's worth a shot. That's what I would say. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um. And I would seek out maybe support groups online for um, children of abusive parents. I think that would be. Um, I think that was good. the best advice right there. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was a great advice. Yeah. Because yeah. um, they would have the most experience and probably be able to relate to you and give you more specific advice that better fits your situation. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.